We've dealt with a lot of messed up stuff on this channel. These cases, they might be the worst, but I think anything can be fixed, except for my financial stability and overall well-being. That's never gonna get fixed. Anyways, we've got two sets of cases here. These are the ones from the 03, and then this is a set that came from Power Sports Nation. If you guys saw the last video, this one is unusable as well. So they couldn't resell this, and they sent it over to see if maybe I could use it for parts or just to take a look at it and compare it to this 03. I've got a crazy idea Oh man, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I'm literally planning on taking this JB welded portion on this 03 case and taking the good section on this case and literally chopping the good one out of this case, chopping the bad one, getting rid of all this weld, and then taking the good one, putting it on this case. We'll put the shift shaft in there. I've got some ideas to line everything up and then put a really nice, good, solid weld on there and actually save these 2003 cases so we can reuse them. Absolutely insane. Yes, but I've got a plan and I think we can get it done. And I know there's gonna be people out there that are like, oh, that'll never hold up. Dude, a good case weld and case repair is almost like brand new. Sometimes a welded and reinforced area is actually stronger than stock, I'm being serious. Now, in order for these cases to have a fighting chance at actually being stronger than they ever were, we want these to be super clean so that we can get a very good weld. Having really clean, you know, whatever it is that you're welding, having it be super clean is really, really key to getting a strong weld, especially when you're doing cases because, you know, these things have been soaked in oil pretty much since they were new and aluminum is porous, so it can be really sloppy. Sometimes you can clean these things up as much as possible, and there's still oil embedded in the aluminum, and that can make welding these really tricky. So let's give it the best chance we can. We're gonna get this thing over to James at Moto Blast so that we can have it vapor blasted before we do any repairing on it. And in order to get it blasted, we need to get the bearings out of here first. We're gonna use our blind bearing puller to get these bearings out of here. I've gotta use a mixture of my old crappy one and the new good one. The old crappy set has a whole bunch of sizes at least. Oh, that was an easy one. Well, you can really see that JB weld now. What a huge heaping pile of JB weld. Honestly, it's kind of amazing how like decent they did, it looks like. I don't even think they had the piece of aluminum that busted off of the bottom here. I think they took another piece of aluminum and just kind of like shaped it in there. If you look at the inside, that just kind of looks, you know, it doesn't like match the contour of the case or anything. I actually was looking on the inside of that case and it doesn't look like this. So I think they just took some sort of aluminum JB welded it in there and then shaped it with a Dremel or something until the bearing would fit. But I mean, you know, for a JB weld job, that's actually not bad. So I've got the bearings out, the seals out. We're pretty cleaned up. I've got most of my stuff together for uh, Moto Blast. We'll go see James. He'll vapor blast these things. We'll get our stuff over there for zinc coating. And then we can get the, a better look at these cases, you know, once they're all cleaned up and make a game plan for this repair. Now we've got a lot of stuff going to Moto Blast, so I think I'm gonna do two trips, but there's one other thing that I do want prepared for this trip, and that's the rims because they do have some imperfections. All right guys, so check it out. This is the rim beforehand. You can see stuff like that. This would never pass for new. Not by this outer lip anyways. The inside, absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna hit this with the die grinder. I've got a couple different pads and sandpapers I'm gonna try. We've got nothing to lose, you know what I mean? Like this is never gonna look new. So I'm gonna see if I can smooth this stuff out and then once James vapor blasts it, that like evens the texture on everything and it might be a little less detectable than we think. So we'll give it a shot, you know, never done this before. 
I've never tried to actually, you know, clean up an OEM rim look like brand new. Well, I definitely say it's overall improved. If I spent a lot of time sanding, I could probably get all these little perfections out. But the thing is, even on the factory finish like this one, I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but the aluminum underneath isn't exactly perfect from the factory. I don't know if you can see like these lines and stuff. And I think once we have this vapor blasted, it's probably gonna mesh a lot of that, I'm hoping. We're, we're gonna see, like I said, this is a trial thing. So uh, most of the like gashes and stuff I got out though. So hopefully this will clean up and it'll be almost a new looking rim. What do you think, James? I think this thing's ready to go. It's all, uh, it's all degreased and uh, beat up. I think I, I kind of like doing parts like this where you can at least see what you're doing yeah. and where you blasted. But uh, you know, like if something's painted as well, but you know, sometimes cases where they're like really new and clean, you can't really, you can't see in the cabinet that good, so you have to just go by memory of where you blasted. This is going to be obvious where you blasted. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give this one a try. We'll put it in this, this small machine in here. Won't be able to see too much. But I... Uh, yeah, give this a little. These, we actually we take off our, our window wipers on these, too. You actually can see it. Yeah, you could. Right there, you yeah. go. Yeah, we got this light here that helps a lot. So we're gonna we're gonna get mostly we're gonna make sure this is all clear too, right? For uh... for the weld. Yeah, just as long as that that area where the uh, the weld is. Let's see how let's see what it does to the JB weld. Even the JB weld, you got some stains on it. <laughs> Yes, it gets a little fog. Try to clear it up for the camera. But yeah, it's uh, it still has stains in the JB Weld. I guess it doesn't fix that unless that was torched. You know, I, it's like maybe. Yeah, maybe it got hot there or something. Yeah. You can definitely see. That's crazy. Yeah, it's cleaned up real nice. But yeah, you see what I mean? It's like dark there. I've seen a lot of JB Weld, but not JB Weld like this. <laughs> it's a special case. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I can't wait to see when it's done. Yeah, it's gonna look good. A few moments later. How'd it come out, James? It came out good. Dude, I cannot. If it wasn't for the JB Weld, I'm not sure. Yeah, I right. This is I the don't, same engine. Uh, you can still see whatever's going on there, the burn. And it doesn't really affect J, this JB Weld. It doesn't get it off. So you know, if somebody was, was actually, like, if I didn't want to repair that? Yeah, just we have an engine over here, too, that has JB Weld on it. And people just leave it on there, and it's going to stay like that. Inside's real clean, too. Oh, you yeah. know, I don't know what's going on here, but now you could really see what's going on in there. Yeah the full piece they put in. I just can't believe, it's like hard to believe that's the same engine. Right. <laughs> yeah, it came, you can see like something like this, almost as bad as it gets is you have a little bit of pitting, but it's still, it kind of smooths it over, evens it out. Yeah. And it doesn't look so bad because they're cast, so it, it kind of just blends it all together. Yeah, Actually, I mean, a lot have... of the times when you have engines that are caked up with oil, with bad seals, it, that oil kind of preserves the aluminum underneath, and those clean up really nice. They have a good shine. But when they're dry <laughs> and they have that corrosion, they just uh, they get a little bit of... Yeah, that little pitting. Right. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty thick. That's going to be... I can't wait to see how you get that off. I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the vapor blaster doesn't get it off, like, I don't take it off. You know, that's... Yeah. It looks like someone actually did well, like... I see splatter, yeah. Yeah, right. So they did do something right there. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious just to see what's under this. Yeah, maybe they, they tacked this in place or something and said, maybe let me just do this. Was leaking. Right, maybe they did that just to get it waterproof with the, uh, the JB Weld. It's yeah. funny because... I don't think it leaked. It was filled with oil when I got it, and it wasn't leaking at all. So. 
Yeah, a lot of the times too, when we vapor blast stuff, I almost thought there was a crack here, but I think it's just some sort of a scratch or something. You know, it's like funny. That. The other case has a mark in that exact spot. Oh, okay. I wonder so if that's it's probably a casting, a casting thing. yeah. But it's a lot really of the times, interesting. after you vapor blast, is when you can find some like real fine cracks and perfections like and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, because some of the cases we get, they'll be say covered with oil in one spot or grease, and we clean it off. You still can't see the crack, but then once you vapor blast it, you can you can see everything. I mean, I think it's good practice to do that just so you know what you're dealing with. When you're yeah, yeah. putting something together, yeah, you know what you have to fix before you do. Cool, man. Thank you. Of course. If you have engine cases, brake calipers, or any other aluminum pieces that you want brought back looking like brand new, or if you have old rusty hardware that you want brought back to brand new with new zinc coating, you can contact James on his website at 732-567-8625. You can also find him on Instagram at moto underscore blast. All right, let's get back to the shop and have a look at this case and see how we're going to repair it. I'll give you guys one last good look at this beautiful work of art. And upon further inspection, you know, James and I were speculating that this was a burn mark on the JB weld. It's probably from oil saturating through where, you know, that weld wasn't completely sealed up. So, you know, I've said it like five times already, but just like pretty damn good job, especially because I don't think these cases were ever split. So they must have done this from the outside working in, which is... It's kind of crazy. So the plan is to burn this shit off. Apparently, if you hit this with the torch, it's supposed to flake right off with a wire brush. So I've got some map gas right here. You could probably use propane also. Map gas burns a little bit hotter. So we're just gonna go straight for the hottest gas that we have. And uh, let's just see what happens, man. We'll start in this area back here. Oh, you can see it changes color like immediately. I don't know how much you're supposed to go here. JB Weld, I think is good for 600 degrees. Looks like it's taking it off. Man, that is a heaping pile of weld. My gosh. You know, as ugly as it is though, I bet you this was pretty strong. It looks like they really piled it on. You can see the little holes and stuff. That is probably where it was leaking from. And I bet you they put on that JB weld to make it stop leaking. I didn't really get in here too much because we're actually going to be cutting this section of the case out anyways, but we can definitely see what's going on. That is crazy. The torch did a great job for getting rid of the JB weld. This is my plan. It's going to seem kind of crazy. Like as I'm looking at this and thinking about it, pulling this off might, I don't even know. We're just going to try it. So basically I want to cut this whole area out down here. And I think if I come in right across here, trying to interfere the least amount with everything. And I wanna have like the best chances of, you know, keeping everything strong. So I don't wanna cut through any areas that I think are gonna be even more difficult to reinforce. So if we come straight down this line all the way to here, I'll come in and fix these lines. If we come straight down here and come up here, I, I don't wanna cut into, this is where one of our shift shafts go. I don't wanna cut I, I don't want to put a split in that and cutting in between here. It's a little too close. You know, this outer housing thing is pretty thick. So uh, I think we have to go above this. So, and I don't want to split it. So I'm going to go up around that and then come, you know, th uh, through here and then down here. And we could just come straight out here, but I kind of like the idea of leaving a bolt hole here because then we can actually bolt the cases together and make sure everything is lined up really nice. I'm planning to put the shift shaft through and all that stuff, but the shift shaft can wiggle. I think we'll, we'll have a better chance of, you know, alignment if we can leave one bolt hole. So if we come over and then straight down this line here and out right here, that is the section right there that I plan on cutting out. It's just going to be a little tedious, you know, coming down on the front, it's going to be easy. And in the back, the, the, the part that's going to be tough is going to be, you know, navigating through here. And then we're going to have to do it on this case as well. And then I'll chamfer all the edges and stuff. We'll bolt it together with the shift shaft and then we can tack it in place and then kind of go through and, 
hopefully, you know, make a really nice and strong weld. Uh, it's just going to be what it's going to be. You know what I mean? We've got two bad cases. We've got nothing to lose but here, but time and uh, time is money. So we could be losing a lot, but <laughs> that's okay. Or we could get burnt and, you know, light on fire, but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. I just went in and made my lines a little bit more precise. I'm trying to make the straightest passes I possibly can. So uh, this is the old line, but you can see this one here. I even have it on an angle and everything so that we can just come straight across over to here. And what I'm planning to do is come in here with a drill. And at each point where there's a turn, I'm just going to drill a small hole from the back side so that on the front side, there will be holes where we can connect the dots and kind of cut from point to point. And that should be an accurate way of cutting it out in theory. Now, unfortunately for me, I'm not sure there's a better way to do this. So uh, it is a little nerve wracking, but I think we can pull this off. I mean, if it doesn't work, new cases are only $800, so. All right, we got her chucked up on the bench here, nice and tight. Holes are drilled, and I went ahead and made the measurements on our second case too. I kept the, the hole small on this one because this is the actual good piece of case that we want, so I didn't want to open up the holes too much. So I guess uh, I'll take the trusty Sawzall and go to town. All right, we're doing pretty good. I got our lines nice and straight. Now we just have to connect these dots here. I'm not gonna lie, it almost looks like we could have just gone straight across and through here. The only thing is, this housing is kind of thick on this side. So I don't know, you know, if we did go straight across there, if we'd run into this, it's possible we could have done that, but we did drill these holes. So we're kind of committed. I mean, we could fill those with weld, but I think I'm gonna try to stick to the original plan and go up and over and just take out this whole chunk. You know, on second thought, we've got such a nice path here. I think I am just gonna go straight across and see if we can do it that way. It'll be easier to fill these holes in than it will be to cut both sides out and get the weld to fill in all the little cracks and crevices. So I think that's the route that we will take. about now I was thinking about how dumb I am for cutting into these two Z400 cases. I was also thinking about Popeye's chicken and their brand new wings. Those shits are freaking delicious and I could really go for some. Well, there is no going back now. We are committed. Look at this piece of crap. You can really see what's going on in here now. We barely shaved off just a little portion of where the shift shaft goes. I think we'll be okay. Once that's welded in, we can put a little uh, pile of weld on the one side just to reinforce that. But I think going straight across and just taking that angle out is actually gonna result better. It's not gonna be difficult to fill those little holes in that we accidentally made. That's not gonna be a problem at all. I'm gonna take this little bit of JB weld off, you know, what, now that we can actually get to it, because this isn't on there, and we'll do the other case same way, only this one, we're just gonna go straight across. We won't do that little portion up there. And I mean, I don't know, man, I think it's gonna work. You know, these are the types of jobs that you just have to take them one at a time because in the midst of doing it, or if you look at the grand scheme of things, it's like, dude, we're never gonna be able to do this, right? This is impossible. So we have a plan and we're just gonna knock this out one step at a time. Well, like most things in life, the second time around went a little bit better. So we, you can see this piece came out really nice and square. This is the good one, and we'll be popping it 
right here on the other case set. And it's actually pretty damn good. There's a bit of a gap up here. So if we match this case up, it goes about there. I can get that, yeah, right about there is where it'll go. Over here, we did really good. There's this little pie slice in here that we're gonna have to bridge the gap. Now, this is gonna be TIG welded. I'm not welding this because I'm not, I, I don't have a TIG welder. So my buddy Matt's gonna weld this. And now, as far as MIG welding goes, gaps like that don't scare me at all. You can fill that in with weld. So I imagine that he can do the same thing with the TIG welder. So we should be able to weld that in, no problem. These holes, again, that should be easy to fix and that little imperfection we did there. So now my job is to put a nice bevel on the edge here and on the edge here so that Matt can fill a really nice weld in, nice and deep and not just sitting on top. And I'm gonna do the bevel facing downward so that, the, so that he will mostly be piling the weld on the top, on the outside, because that I imagine will be the easiest for him to get to. And then on the inside, I will do a small bevel because I think he will be able to run a bead on the inside, at least on some of these areas, so that there can be a nice bead of weld on the inside and the outside. Just have to be careful on the inside how much we pile up because I'm not sure how much clearance we have with the shift drum, drum and stuff, but I know on the outside, you know, we can pile it up pretty high. Is he, he does a really good job with welds. I'm not going to smooth them out and make it look like it was never there. I'd rather have him make a nice, thick weld because that's gonna be the best for strength. Oh man, there it is. Pretty scary. Definitely pretty scary. You can see I've got everything beveled for our weld. Here is the piece right here. And you can see I've got the one bolt hole there so that we can bolt this in place. And that should make tacking it a lot easier, in theory anyways. But we have got some gaps to fill. So that's where the skilled welding is going to come into play. This is the one that's that's a pretty big gap. But, you know, with welding, like if this was steel, this wouldn't worry me at all. You can bridge a gap like that and make a really nice strong weld. I'm not too worried about it. So, again, give this thing the best fighting chance. We're going to throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and try to get all of the impurities out of the aluminum because that is going to be the biggest thing fighting us in terms of getting a nice solid weld. Now you gotta remember, these cases have been sitting in oil literally for 20 years. So I'm just using basic palm olive, like cheapy degreaser, and I use a ton of it. This is a big, I think it's a 30 liter ultrasonic cleaner. So there's a lot of fluid in there and we'll just mix it up with a paint mixer. Make sure that soap is real good and mixed in there. And then we're gonna take the cases and just drop them in place. Oh man, that water is super hot. And take our other piece too. This one was not vapor blasted. So, and the bearing I left in there. I'm leaving the bearing in place because when you weld aluminum, when you weld anything really, uh, it can warp. So I want that bearing in there to keep the shape of that just in case. That portion of the case is pretty thick, so it'll probably be okay, but we might as well just in case. I'm gonna run this thing in 90 minute sections. I think that's the longest that this thing goes. And I'm putting the temperature at maximum, which is 80 degrees Celsius, 99. We'll do 99 minutes, that's what, an hour and 39 minutes. And every time a cycle completes, I'll pull the cases out, rinse them off, put them back in, and then do another cycle with fresh soap. I'll probably run that for like three cycles at a bare minimum, so. Three cycles is like four and a half hours, almost five hours really, because it's an hour and 39 minutes each. And that should get all of those impurities out of that metal. Now, while that is cooking, I wanna hop over to the computer and show you guys some graphics updates. Well, interesting chain of events. I came in to do some computer work and my monitor had fallen apart randomly. <laughs> I guess that's just what happens sometimes. Anyways, I made this post on Instagram and in the post I had a poll showing three different colors of wheels. We've got the black wheels, the bronze wheels, and the silver wheels. And these polls on Instagram are like kind of glitchy. They show up sometimes, they, they don't. I don't know if maybe I just don't know how to use them. But anyways, the last time I got it to pop up, it was like 90% of people voted for the silver wheels. There's over 300 comments and you can see in there, it's the same thing. Silver looks like the play, silver, silver is more retro. Fire emojis, raw metal, silver all day, silver, silver or gold. 
gold anodizing, silver, 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 silver pegs also, silver for the win, silver wheels 100%. Basically everybody was saying silver. I was kind of surprised. I thought people would go for the black wheels. I was, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I was kind of hoping we could coat the wheels because there's some imperfections in our aluminum wheels and bringing those back to brand new is going to be difficult. So I cleaned them up and got a lot of the imperfections out, but that rubbed away the silver anodizing, which I believe from the factory, they're silver or clear anodized. So I was kind of hoping, you know, if we had coated them, that would kind of alleviate that issue. So I cleaned up the wheels and I think when I have them vapor blasted and we can put a coating on them, they should look like brand new, but we are gonna go with the silver wheels. I also did the graphics. So uh, my little rendering that I had done right here, these were like the basic graphics, but you know, I still have to go back in and measure them and then trim them and make cut lines and everything for the printer. So I went back in and finalized them. Now I have them completely done. So here they are. This is the updated graphics kit. You can see I've got my, it's basically the same. Uh, I just switched out. I had gone, I had black fading to blue and now it is dark blue fading to light blue. And I ghosted my uh, logo in the back. I felt like, dude, we're kind of going off the rails here with the, you know, sticking to original thing. So I put my logo in the back there, updated the little kicker logo. It's got special edition in there. And then of course we've got the big 400. That's gonna go on the fenders back here. A lot of people in the comments wanted the 400 there and it does look really good in the rendering. So I'm really excited for that. I also ordered a KFX 400 uh, hood. They only come in black, so we're gonna have to coat that in a, in a paint. I'm gonna try to match it to the frame as much as possible. And yes, we are going to do silver heel guards. A lot of people did not like the blue heel guards, including myself. I felt like it looked kind of tacky. Also, if you look on the back here, I've got the Yoshimura exhaust. Now you'll notice that is the RS2. I've been thinking about it and this is going to be my personal quad. It's gonna be replaced in the KFX 450R. Uh, originally, I was gonna sell it at the end and because we were sticking to so original, I was thinking maybe it would go to like a collector or something like that, but you know, seeing as we've gone so far off the rails here and I'm going to be riding this thing, I feel like it would be such a sin to have that OG, new old stock Yoshimura pipe, you know, back from, from 2003, you know, it's gonna get beat up and stuff. I'd rather do one that's available now. And if you go online, they've got them for $521 and it's a full system. So our slip one was like over $600 for that new old stock. This full system is 521 right now. eBay has a 15% off coupon. It comes out to like 475 out the door. So we're gonna have a full system for 475 as opposed to the new old stock with one, which was 600. And plus, if this one gets beat up, you can always go out and replace it. So with the design done for the graphics, I can now get them out to get them printed. I'm actually gonna be working with Graphics Producer. That's the company that I purchased those remake graphics. They saw that I had bought their graphics and put them in a video and they wanna help out and print the custom graphics too. So that is freaking awesome. If you guys see behind me, we've got some new stuff. You might be able to see which direction we're going in here when it comes to these cases. So I contacted my buddy, Matt at Stouts Customs. He usually does all of my difficult welding jobs, really anything aluminum. I just don't have the ability to do that. Well, I didn't have the ability. So he and my buddy Shane work there at Stouts Customs and they're really backed up right now. They weren't able to take the job on immediately. So that's one of those things where, you know, when you can't do the job yourself, you're at the mercy of, you know, having other people do it. And that is a great thing to have, but uh, I'd really like to be able to do this myself. So I went out to Harbor Freight, took the plunge and bought one of these Vulcan TIG welders. Vulcan is supposed to be one of the better ones. Actually, it's supposed to be the best one that they offer at Harbor Freight. So it's like, I guess you could say the best of the worst. You know, if you go for like a Miller or a Lincoln Electric, it's uh, probably like $2,500 to $3,000 for the equivalent. This one wasn't exactly cheap. This whole setup was around $1,400. A huge shout out to the guy working behind the counter. He gave me 10% off, even though there were no deals, but that was huge. It was like $140 off of this. I've got some pure argon gas right here. Um, I've got this, this whole thing came with pretty much all this stuff. It came with the foot pedal. Um, here is our torch. Here's a... Uh, the lead that goes to the uh, argon gas. These are the porcelain cups and other things for our torch. It even came with this little, it's a, uh, a steel metal gauge. So you can see what thickness you're working on. We've got our ground right here and it's pretty nice, really nice and strong. Got a regulator here for our gas system. And uh, then I also, I had to buy these separately. These are filler rods. These should be good. It says that it will work for uh, 50 series, 60 series, 
and castings. So this should be the right filler rod. And then I bought this Vulcan helmet. This is a really nice helmet. It's got a huge display in here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see. It's like twice the size of the display on my other welding helmet. Uh, and I also got these, they're actually TIG welding gloves. They had, they're supposed to be specifically for TIG welding, but I've uh, really been meaning to upgrade this stuff forever. You know, I've got the old Lincoln Electric over there. That is a great system for MIG. It's a great welder in general, but uh, you know, this is something I've been meaning to take the plunge and learn how to TIG weld for quite some time now. And now I have the ability to do aluminum. Now the thing is, that welding aluminum isn't exactly easy. There's definitely a learning curve. I've got quite a bit of experience when it comes to MIG welding, but I, I think I've done a little bit of TIG welding in like high school, like a long ass time ago in one of my shop classes and I sucked at it. But uh, the thing is also, you know, not just aluminum welding is a little bit more difficult, but castings are supposed to be the worst. So I've been watching hours and hours of welding videos, but you know, watching videos isn't gonna build skill Hopefully we can get the job done with this, but it won't be in this video because I think it would take, I want to take a couple days to practice, you know, learning how to use this machine and stuff before I just dive in and do this potentially extremely hard job. You know, luckily we've got a couple sets of cases here so I can practice on them and we'll just see, man. I don't know if we're going to do any kind of, I, I will film it. You know, you guys will be able to see probably the catastrophe that's going to be this job, but uh, I don't know, definitely no tutorials. So our cases are pretty prepared. They're as prepared as I can make them. From the research that I've done, I've basically done everything that I can possibly do to clean them because that's going to be the enemy with cast aluminum. If you guys have any tips, please let me know in the comment section below. So far, I have vapor blasted the cases. I ultrasonic cleaned them for five and a half hours, and then I... I've, uh, short, I've also beveled all the edges and whatnot, as you guys saw in this video. And then I put them in the oven at 400 degrees for eight hours, just in an effort to bake out all of the impurities in the aluminum. Because that's the problem with cast, is that it's just an impure aluminum. So you get a lot of, it's just, it, it just ends up being messy. So, and then on top of me just being a complete freaking noob, it's probably going to be a disaster. <laughs> so that's going to be that. You guys will have a good laugh when you get a look at those welds. <laughs> I'll probably be laughing too, if you don't laugh. You'll cry. Anyways, check it out. We got the ASPCA Raptor. I pulled this thing up because I've got this freaking sweet ass battery right here. It's a lithium ion with 500 cold cranking amps. The reason I bought this is because when I made my video talking about why, you know, how this thing, it runs great once it's running. It just has hard starts and sometimes it just doesn't want to completely turn over and it gets like stuck. So it needs a stronger starting system. And people said, dude, get an anti-gravity battery. So I looked at the anti-gravity battery and it had, uh, I think, I want to say it had like 680 cold cranking amps, which is crazy, but it's like a $350 battery. Now, I'm not saying that like, yeah, I mean, if it would fix it, it's going to be worth buying it. But when I sell this thing, it kind of sucks that, you know, if you have to replace the battery, it'd be 350 bucks. So I was looking at the anti-gravities and I found these, there's a whole bunch of these lithium ions. I think they're just kind of becoming more popular now. And this one was way, way, way more inexpensive. It was a hundred bucks. And I got a special charger. This was, I think, 35 bucks. So for $135, we will be nearly doubling the cold cranking amps from the 270 of the existing battery. And hopefully that will make this thing crank over no problem. If it works, I'm gonna do it like 100 times starting and stopping it and just making sure because the last thing we want is to be out on the trail and the damn thing doesn't wanna start. And then I'm going to be heading down to Carolina Adventureland. And uh, if this does work, I'm gonna bring the ASPCA Raptor and I'll take some footage of it running down there, and then this thing will probably be going up for sale. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. Also, consider subscribing for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to see updates in between videos. It is Michael Sabo 350 I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.